Well, oh, blimey, you look a bit of a state, don't you? Where were you last night? Hey, with a red nose, didn't you? Have a good blow going. <laughs> Here, what's all this straw down your back? Look. Hey, Daphne, lend us your vacuum, will you? This one's in a terrible state. <laughs> you ain't been having it off with Cary Grant there in the uh, <laughs> packing department after closing time, have you? Yeah, I love. Ah. There you are. You'll be getting a store a bad name, you will. <laughs> Close your eyes, girls. <laughs> Hold your breath, darling. <laughs> on about. I bet it's not the first time you've lost your knickers in a tube. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Mr Lucas. Morning, Mr Mash. You're early. Uh, have you had the pleasure of meeting Miss Daphne Ackroyd and Miss Ivy Plunkett of the cleaning department? How do you do? Hello, lovely boy. <laughs> this is Mr Lucas. The Robert Redford of the ready-mades. <laughs> you don't see him very often on account he's always five minutes late. <laughs> so <Sauce> fox. <laughs> Play your cards right, you're on a promise there. <laughs> I've come in early because I'm not stopping. Are you chucking it in, are you? No, I've got this bird coming up for the afternoon from the country. So I've just come in to tell him I've got a cold and I've got to get back to bed. Ooh. Well, it's half true. <laughs> I'm dead before they give you time off here, mate. Huh. Old Mr. Luthwaite from the kitchen department broke his arm. They made him spend the rest of the day demonstrating coffee grinders with the other one. <laughs> I'll tell him I've got a temperature. And they'll have you straight up to sister. And she's a very funny woman, I can tell you. <laughs> she don't always take your temperature the way you expect. <laughs> I mean, they won't take my word for it. Uh, not at Grace Brothers, no. Here, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a tip. What we used to use in the army. What? You put an onion under your arm and chew on a bit of soap. I haven't got an onion. I'll get you one from fruit and veg. <laughs> What were you up to last night? Oh, I was watching Yogi on the television. Yogi Bear? No, Indian <laughs> Yogi. They were showing you all the positions you can get into, and I was doing it with them in case there was one I didn't know. <laughs> Just got past the fifth position of supreme ecstasy when my horizontal hold went. <laughs> I wish I could do to move. Yes, well, it would be. You're not going to ask for the day off, are you? What, here? You don't get the day off here, not even if you're paralysed. They put a coat on you and use you as a dummy. <laughs> Well, I'm not stopping, you know. I've got a stream of coal. Well, I'll mention that to Mr Granger after I've told him about my back. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mr Granger. Good morning. Good morning, Mr Granger. My word, you do look pale. Yes, I, I'm afraid I've got a touch of my old gastric trouble. Well, I'm sorry to bother you with my troubles, Mr Granger. I, I'm but... sorry, ma'am, Mr Lucas, if you want to discuss it, you'll have to discuss it through a closed door. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Lucas. Good morning, Mr. Lucas. Anyway, listen. It's supposed to stop me getting a cold for the rest of the winter. I've had a course of seven injections. Oh, your poor arm. Oh, no, Mrs. Slocum. They don't give them to them in your arm anymore. I won't be able to sit through a picture for a whole week. <laughs> they give you everything down there nowadays, don't they? <laughs> I had the earache, but still my doctor gave it to me down there. <laughs> anyway, I don't hold with all these newfangled things. Last night, I had a hot whiskey. And this morning, I had brandy and milk on me Rice Krispies. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Snap, crackle and burp. <laughs> <laughs> not only that, but I've got me flask full of rum and pep. Oh, well, it may not kill the germs, but it'll make them dizzy. <laughs> You've got cold, have you? No, I'm just taking precautions. Oh, that's good, cos my doc said I mustn't get a cold for seven days. Ah, well, you better get Captain Peacock to send me home. I mean, I've got an absolute streamer. I shall have no difficulty in keeping my distance from you, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> you were about that at the Christmas party. You couldn't wait to jump into that cupboard with me and start playing sardines. <laughs> I'm sure you have plenty to do in your own department, Mr. Lucas. At once, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> Did you really jump in the cupboard with it? Well, only because Captain Peacock was trying to get me to pull his cracker in the fitting room. <laughs> <laughs> you as well. <laughs> Here, mate. One Spanish onion, one piece of carbolic soap. 
Put that under your arm, that under your tongue. Do you think it'll get me off for the afternoon? Well, it got me off D-Day. Good morning, Ken. Get, do it now. The froth only lasts a minute. Go on. Mr. Granger not here? Yes, he is here, Captain Peacock, but only part-time. Yeah. Has he got a touch of the gastrics again? I'm afraid so. And, of course, his age doesn't help. Mm. What do you mean, he's more susceptible? No, he can't get there as quick as he'd like to. <laughs> You're probably wondering why I'm walking like this, Captain Peacock. I've done my back in. I hadn't noticed any difference. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, what are you doing with your shirt undone? I'm putting an onion under my arm. Ask a silly question. <laughs> Captain Peacock! <laughs> Could I have a word with you, Captain Peacock? Uh, not at all, Mr. Lucas. Well, I won't bring Are you being served, huh? No, I was just trying to remember what I came in here for. <laughs> I've got a list here somewhere. Oh. Captain Peacock! In a moment, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> ah, here it is. Now, let me see. Captain Peacock! In a moment, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> uh, there are two pairs of socks, a dozen handkerchiefs, a pair of braces, a tie, <laughs> and. Uh... Sir, uh, Mr. Lucas can help you? <laughs> No, on second thoughts, I've changed my mind. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Chris. You're dribbling. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, now what is it, Mr. Lucas? I don't feel very well, Captain Pink. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel very well, I, Captain Pink. I'm not prepared to hold a conversation with you until you have emptied your mouth. Please? You've got a doctor's certificate? No! In that case, I cannot allow you to go home. Well, could I go home and see me doctor? Certainly not. But I'm not myself. If you'd looked round a couple of minutes ago, you'd have seen me foaming at the mouth. Yes, we used to get that in the army, you know. It's usually caused by the placing of soap under the tongue. <laughs> I've got hiccups as well. Hiccups is hardly serious enough for a day off, Mr Lucas. Go and stand behind the cabinet until you've recovered. <laughs> I've also got a temperature. Could I go and see the sister? I'll send for sister. <gasps> Get behind the cabinet. <laughs> and Mr. Lucas. Captain Peek, come up! <laughs> I don't know what aftershave you're using, but you're coming over very strongly as a Lancashire hot pot. <laughs> uh, would you uh, put me through to first aid, please? Ah, sister. <laughs> Captain Peacock, the ladies and gentlemen's outfit. <laughs> I wonder if you'd be kind enough to bring your thermometer down here. <laughs> and a loofah. There. How do you like that, madam? Well, it's almost what I wanted, but it's, it's not the colour. Oh, but blue looks so cool on madam. Miss Brahms, over here. Don't you think that madam looks cool in blue? Yes, like an iceberg. <laughs> I'm not sure about the flowers. Oh, but flowers are very much in vogue. Yes, and all the other women's magazines. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Brahms. The iceberg was enough. <laughs> it's a little tight around the waist. Ah. I had to give you that size because Madame has such slender shoulders. But I can very easily alter it. No, I'm, I'm not all that keen, really. Oh, no, no, no. It's no trouble at all. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But I really didn't want it. Well, you can't change your mind now. I've started the alteration. <laughs> I'm sure Madame will be delighted with it when it comes back from the workroom. On Thursday week. I'll be away then. Oh. In that case, put not urgent on it. <laughs> now, if Madam would like to change... Well, now, just a moment. I have a hat that would go wonderful with that. Oh, no, no, I don't wear hats. <laughs> well, you're wearing one now. Oh, well, uh, it belongs to a friend. I'll buy it for her, then. No, thank you. Ooh, I can't stand people who are always changing their minds. Well, it was a very good line of sales pattern, Mrs Slocum. You have to know your customer, you understand. 
I tried it once with a lady wrestler. She had me flat on my back. <laughs> oh, that's me that flat on his arms. Oh, my throat. I feel as though the germs are surging round. Look out, you foreign bodies. Get a load of this. Have you got anything catching on going home? No, 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 no. I have a very strong constitution. All my white corpustules are fighting it. <laughs> huh? You've got one, haven't you? You've got a cold. No, pass me one of those hankies. I haven't got one. No, no one from the, 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 the box there at the end of the counter. What colour do you want? Oh, it doesn't matter! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. You have got a cold. My Ooh. doctor who gave me those injections told me I mustn't get a cold for seven days. <laughs> Are you planning to rob a bank? <laughs> no, to stop the germs from going up my nose. If you wear that, you'll go up my nose. Well, it's either this or I'm going home. That's a very militant attitude, Miss Brahms. You can like it or lump it. Oh! Oh, well, if that's, that's the tone you use, I'm going to have a word with Captain Peacock. Captain Peacock, may I have a word with you? Uh, not at the moment, Mrs Slocum. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah. You're normal. Yes, but we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've definitely got a cold. I mean, listen to this. Achoo! There you are, look at that. <laughs> I mean, I really think I ought to go home for the afternoon. I wouldn't want anyone else to catch it. <gasps> Too late. I've given it to Mrs. Slocum. I already had one of my own. Captain Peacock, may I now have a word with you? In a moment, Mrs. Slocum. I'm sorry to have troubled you. No, that's Mrs. quite Slocum. all right. That sounds like a nasty cold, Mrs. Slocum. Oh, yes, it's just beginning. That's what I wanted to discuss with you, Captain Peacock. I cannot let you go home, Mrs. Slocum, just because you have a cold. I don't want to go home. It's Miss Brahms. She won't stop because she's afraid of catching my cold just because she's had these flu injections. Miss Brahms, over here. <laughs> oh, hello. Your oil well's this way. <laughs> did you have these injections? In me bum. <laughs> I think sister means at what establishment? Oh, my doctor given me. Your doctor gave them to you, Miss Brown? No, he didn't. He charged me eight quid. <laughs> well, it's quite right. She must avoid cold contact for a week. Mm. Otherwise, she'll have to have it done again. Yes, and I can't afford the expense, so if she's stopping, I'm going. Well, I'm not having a day's pay, Doc, just because you've got a jacksy full of vaccine. <laughs> Delicate way to put it. I, I'm sorry that I've been so long away, Captain Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go here today. Well, sister, if uh, Miss Brahms mustn't catch a cold, she'd better lend a hand in the gentleman's department. I'm not catching his cold. If you will allow me to finish, Miss Brahms. And as Mr. Lucas has one anyway, he can assist Mrs. Slocum in the ladies. Uh, no, Mrs. Slocum wouldn't like that, Captain Peacock. I mean, and she might get my cold on top of her cold. Be much better if you sent me home for the afternoon. You will do as you are told, Mr. Lucas. I am not having a man in the ladies. It's unheard of. Only to assist you, Mrs. Slocum. You, but, but it's a very personal service in the ladies' department, Captain Peacock. Mm. Yes. Well, in that case, he can confine himself to gloves, scarves, and handling the till. But I don't think I can be trusted, Captain Beacock. I know you can't, but you'll lose your toes. <laughs> right, Mr. Humphreys, I take it you have no objection to having a lady behind the counter? I have absolutely no feelings on the matter whatsoever. <laughs> I would prefer the Pallone Ranger to remove her mask. Well, well places, everyone. Thank you, sister. Nice to talk to an intelligent woman. You... Put one finger wrong, and I'll have you in front of Mr. Rumbold. With a threat like that hanging over my head, I wouldn't dare put a finger wrong. <laughs> Take these back to the fitting room. Oh, I beg your pardon, madam. Ah! <laughs> Cross me up! I didn't put a finger anywhere. Oh, it's the blue alteration. She's still here. No, ain't you gone home yet? No, here. You can have your onion back. It didn't work. Well, of course it didn't. You ain't peeled it, have you? <laughs> well, you might have told me. Well, it's common sense, isn't it? I mean, nobody sticks an onion under their arm without peeling it, do they? 
How'd you get on with the soap? I swallowed it. You don't deserve the day off. I'm not going to get it, am I? Well, if Peacock finds you over here, you'll get the sack and you won't have to come in at all, will you? Peacock sent me over here. I've been transferred. He sent you... You're serving over here? God! You and half have a day here, won't you, eh? Hey, whoa <laughs> I was going to have a better day at my place, wasn't I? <laughs> well, don't give up, mate. Don't break a leg. You know, that might be my only chance. What have you got in that box? Ah, half a dozen suspender belts. Yeah. Oh, blimey, they're not bringing them back again, are they? I didn't know they'd ever been away. <laughs> Ugly-looking things, aren't they? Well, they're not for looking at, are they? They're for taking off. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here they've got that new crafty catch there, look. Oh, yeah. Listen, I've had a lot of trouble with this new catch on bras, you know. Yeah. Well, I've mastered it now, though. I've got it down to about eight seconds. Eight seconds? <laughs> yeah. Here, watch this. Just one more kiss before we say goodnight, Miss Bra. It was only six seconds. Yeah, well, she wasn't struggling. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all marked alphabetically. B for braces, G for gloves. Where's A for handkerchiefs? <laughs> <laughs> that comes under H for haberdashery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are these jokey shorts? Jockey shorts? <laughs> <laughs> well, jockeys come in here. <laughs> of course not. They're just a sexy line in men's underwear. Oh. Well, why'd you call them joke jockey shorts? Well, you know, if anybody shouts they're off, you know you're on your way to the winning place. <laughs> <laughs> you live in a dream world, don't you? <laughs> and down here we've got Y fronts. Oh, now do you have Y backs? <laughs> <laughs> no, strangely enough, there's not much call for those, do you? <laughs> Uh, um, yes, Mr. Granger. Send that girl back to her own department. She's been seconded to us, Mr. Granger. Been what? Placed here at Captain Peacock's request. Oh, we'll soon see this back. Back. Captain Peacock, are you free? <laughs> at present, yes. Could I have a word with you? Yes, what is it? Well, I have a very serious complaint. <laughs> It doesn't appear to be getting any better. <laughs> Can I help you, madam? Oh, is there an assistant free? Well, I'm assisting at this counter. Oh. Oh. Well, uh, you see the suit I'm wearing? Well, I'm not very happy in it. <laughs> oh. I can quite understand that, madam. It is a bit old-fashioned, isn't it? You want something new. New? But it is new. I bought it here yesterday. <laughs> Let me have another look. Ah, yes, it's one of our revival lines, an echo of the 40s. <laughs> well, you see, I feel that I'm not very happy with the fit, and I feel that it's all a bit too loose. Yes, well, that's the trouble with some of the revival lines. They are a bit on the loose side, you know. Let me have a look and see what size it was. Oh, yes, a revive 45. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like a smaller size. <laughs> I'm afraid we can't do that, madam, on account of the fact you've already worn it, you see. Uh -huh. However, we can soon have it altered for you. Now, let me just see how it fits. Put your arms up. How is it under the arms? Oh, yes, hand down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is cosy, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's a cosy fit. Yes, it is. <laughs> Could I have my hands back, please? <laughs> now, how is it on the chest? Oh, I'm not complaining about the chest. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> it's the skirt. Ah. I'll just get me chalk. <laughs> You'll need a bigger piece than that. <laughs> now, exactly whereabouts on the skirt, madam? <clears throat> oh, well, uh, it's a little bit embarrassing. It's, uh, it's what they call the derriere. <laughs> <laughs> well, we specialise in derrieres, madam. My Jewish friends call me Lucas the Tukas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly what is the problem? Oh, well, it seems to droop. At the back. The derriere or the skirt? <laughs> no, the skirt. The skirt droops down there. Ah, yes, of course. What we need is a tuck in there <laughs> and a tuck in there. <laughs> you can't do that, you see, because when I sit down, it'll ride up. Quite right, madam, quite right. No tucks in the derriere. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, at 
actually is the waist. Look, you can get your hand right in there. <laughs> oh, really? Let me have a look. Oh, yes. Oh, hold on. I've dropped my chalk down there. <laughs> Find me chalk. <laughs> I think it's wedged in the customer's derriere. <laughs> but I can't leave me chalk in there. I've got to account for it. Go on, get up. No, could you ask her to jump about a bit? What seems to be the trouble? The lady was two inches off the waist to counteract her drooping derriere. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, that's quite a small alteration, madam. A day or so, depending on where you live. <laughs> Oh, well, that's quite simple, isn't it, Mr. Lucas? Yes, of course. What could be simpler than a London derriere? <laughs> Can I help you, sir? Yes. Fetch me a pair of trousers like these, will you, lad? I don't actually fetch anything, sir. Well, how do you mean? I don't serve, sir. I just direct the customers. You will excuse me a moment. Mr. Granger? Yes, Captain Deacon. Are you free? <laughs> Mr. Humphrey. Yes, Captain Peacock. Are you free? Yes, I'm free, Captain Peacock. A pair of trousers for the gentleman. Yeah. Is that all you do? Yes. Oh, cushy job. <laughs> the customer is always right, sir. Walk this way, sir. <laughs> What colour was it you had in mind? No, fawn. Fawn. <laughs> there we are, sir. Fawn. Now then, your waist. Oh. Excuse me. Mm. We're not holding it in, are we? <laughs> Thirty-four. Mm -hmm. Inside leg? I don't know. <laughs> Take the gentleman's inside leg. You must be joking. Come on, dear. No, it's not ladylike. <laughs> well, I do it. <laughs> what are you afraid of? The unknown. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give you an estimate. I'll tell you what, come round here with me and hold this tape measure. Now, hold it there, quite still. Would you step this way, sir? <laughs> Excuse me a moment. <laughs> Stanley, peace! What is it? <laughs> there we are, miss. Don't worry if the night dress is a bit long. You'll find it'll ride up with well. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lucas, I shall be many more minutes. I'm just finishing my coffee break. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you won't mind folding the hort. <laughs> oh, blimey, you still here, mate? Well, what does it look like? Another ten minutes and my bird will have flown. I think I can help you there. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Oh, dearie, dearie me, look what I've done. I've spilt slippery polish all over the floor. <laughs> I do hope no one slips on it. They might break a leg. <laughs> Or at least injure themselves enough to have to go home for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> Am I being too subtle for you? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, give it a try. All right, there it goes. Captain Peacock! Captain Peacock! Mr. Lucas has broken his legs up! 
Jenny Peacock. Oh, poor Miss Lucas. Come on. Ah, oh, Mr. Lucas broken his leg, sir. Oh, Mr. Humphreys, a ring for an ambulance. We get into hospital. No, it's all right. I've only sprained it. Just let me go home and get into bed for the afternoon. I'll be as right as rain. <laughs> Have a try from my office. What's happening? Accident, Mr. Rumbold. Mr. Lucas has sprained his ankle, sir. Oh, poor fellow. I can smell a strong smell of peppermint around here. Unless I'm much mistaken, I can smell rum. Ah, oh, yeah. I was just giving Mr. Lucas a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Him. <laughs> no, there's no left. I think he's quite able to carry on, sir. Don't be so callous, Peacock. We're not in the desert now. He wasn't in the desert then. Come <laughs> on, oh, Mr. Lucas. I'll help you to a taxi and we'll send you straight home. Thank you very much, Mr. Rumbold. I can't tell you how much I appreciate right, it. Come on, right, give me the other. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. What's the matter with young Mr. Lucas? Oh, it's nothing serious, sir. Just a sprained ankle. Yes, I'm just going home to jump straight into bed. No nonsense, nonsense. You, you, you can't take a chance with an ankle. You just uh, you sit there. <laughs> you, uh, put him into my Rolls Royce and drive me straight home. And drive him straight to the hospital. I will ring, sir, and tell him he's coming. Yes, make sure he gets a proper X-ray, and make an appointment with Doctor Garstang for this afternoon. He's the best in the country. That's most generous, sir. When Grace Brothers take care of you, you can forget your worries and pains. Yes, you can forget all your pleasures as well. <laughs> uh, 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 carry on, everybody. You're all looking very well. Okay. <laughs> Have I missed something? Yes, Mr. Lucas slipped on the stairs, fell down. Mr. Rumbold came in and said, Oh dear, you must have the day off. Then Mr. Young, Mr. <laughs> I'll push a note to you under the door. 